The race for the White House has taken a couple of twists and turns so far with an assassination attempt, a withdrawal from the race, and now no official Democratic nominee with weeks to go before the convention in Chicago. But what do all the numbers have to say about this? We're joined here now with Drew McCoy, the president of the decision desk at the headquarters for The Hill. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cron4 this afternoon. We want to talk the latest polls with you. You are, you're our numbers guy. <laughs> Happy to be here. Good to talk to you. So let's start with how Kamala Harris is doing, how people feel about her and becoming the next president, whether or not they like her. That was so much of what we, the criticism we heard towards President Biden was, you know, no one's going to vote for you. The polls are showing that you're sinking. What are they showing about Kamala now? Well, it's interesting. Um, there is some data that we're collecting on um, Harris-Trump matchups prior to President Biden dropping out and um, Kamala Harris becoming sort of the, the heir apparent. Nationally, she holds about the same. Um, it's just in some of the battleground states. Uh, you may see a divergence, um, for example, Arizona, uh, in that head-to-head -head matchup, which was more theoretical. We're going to get more data now that she's obviously taking over here, and, and we'll have this as a baseline. But, you know, she was doing about 3% um, worse in a place like Arizona. Uh, I'm just looking Georgia. She was uh, pretty close, pretty tied. So it varies. Um, there's not a lot of difference in some of these places. Nationally, they're about the same. Their favorability ratings and unfavorabilities ratings were the same nationally, Harris and Biden. So it'll be interesting to see as this takes shape if the voters' view of her changes over time. And her favorability rating really will play a crucial role in determining whether or not she can beat the former Republican president. Sure. One of the things that people look at is, is what we've been calling it. Uh, double haters, people that weren't really interested in voting for either candidate. Um, we saw that in 2016, they tended to break for Donald Trump, and that helped in his victory over Hillary Clinton. They broke for Joe Biden in 2020, and obviously that made a big difference. So we'll start to see where people say, you know what, I'm not really enthused or excited about either candidate. If the introduction of a new candidate um, leads them to go one direction or another. The polls that were done were all taken before President Biden dropped out, literally like 24 hours ago, basically, at this point. Do you think the numbers are going to change a lot now that he's officially gone from the Republican ticket, how that will then change things for Kamala? I think you can expect people to give her a look, certainly. Um, the numbers that we saw, as, as I said before, were theoretical. There's obviously a big difference when now this is the person you may be voting for. And then the campaign's going to happen. You know, it's very different going from the number two person on a ticket to being the person who could conceivably be sitting in the Oval Office. So the way that people look at you, what the scrutiny they put you under, is certainly going to be different. And yeah, I would expect to see some differences, maybe good, maybe bad. I think whatever, given the way this year has gone, it's going to be a roller coaster. We may see sort of a, a bump early on. And then again, as that campaign um, gets into full swing, it'll be a little shorter. But we may see some changes from then again. So I think there's going to be a couple of twists in the story still. Sure. And kind of when you talk about a roller coaster, that's a little bit what your polling numbers look like. It's like up and down and up and down of how people are feeling about her. Uh, do you think that her pick for a vice president, even when the poll is about her, will that will change how people feel, what direction they want to lean? Sure, it's quite possible. It's kind of one of a candidate's first big decisions. It's something that um, people look at, their judgment. Um, it tells you kind of who they feel they need some reassurance with, maybe geographically, maybe ideologically. So I think people will certainly be doing that again because she hasn't gone through, it's a, it's a very weird case. She hasn't gone through the primary in the same way that Donald Trump or Joe Biden did, but she did go through a general election campaign. So it's a, it's a very unique situation. Yeah, and lastly here, she isn't officially the Democratic nominee yet. How heavily do you think her team will weigh polling on her favorability, on her chances to beat Donald Trump in the next three weeks or so before the Democratic uh, convention in Chicago? I, th I think it's, they're going to be looking at everything. Um, again, if, if you think it's kind of a compressed and wild timeline for us, just imagine being on that staff and everything that you've been doing, and now suddenly it's changed and it's a new person. So they're going to want as much data as they can for every decision they make. And we'll be turning to you to help us go through it all. Drew McCoy from The Hill, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you.